Hello and welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're talking about the new features in Reaper 5.94 and 5.95. We're going to start off with some of the changes that go along with the MIDI devices preferences. As you can see here, there is this error opening devices window that has popped up because my MIDI controllers are disconnected. And these are controllers that I have previously configured in Reaper and enabled and set up for controlling and MIDI input. And as a result of them not being connected right now, it's telling me that I have an error. And you will see this error window pop up um, until you either turn off the error or correct the um, MIDI device settings so that these devices are not being looked for anymore. So we can check this box to not show this window anymore. I'm also going to plug in one of my MIDI controllers. And so I've plugged in my Arturia MIDI Lab Mark II, and I'm going to click Retry. And I go into the Preferences, and I go to MIDI Devices, and we'll see here um, the MIDI Lab is now enabled, enabled for input and control. And so it's found it, but you'll see here a lot of other things um, like, uh, let's see here, my Nocturne keyboard, it's not available, but it is enabled. So we can double click on this and configure this. So we can uncheck enable input for this device. And now it'll just change that to not present. Uh, my Cuneo is not connected, but I will use that later on. I'll leave that alone. And then there are a lot of other devices here that, um, that I don't use. Now here's some things in my output section that I don't use anymore. So session one, that's a, a virtual MIDI port. If we right click here, there's a lot more options. This is all new stuff. We can change the output ID of any of these. We can forget the device. We can enable it or we can configure it. So I'm going to click on forget and it will just remove these from the list. I mentioned changing the device number. So I'll do that here with my QNEO. I'm going to Go to input ID, and I'm going to set this to, I don't know, I'll set this to 13. And then uh, we get this window, device 10 is already used by something. We want to swap that with 13, and we can click OK. Error message, if we want that to pop up again, if it's not popping up, there's this, uh, this preference page, preferences audio, uh, now has a separate warnings for uh, audio devices and MIDI devices, and when enabled MIDI devices are not present. So we can click that. It can be pretty annoying to uh, open up Reaper and you go to start recording and you realize that your controller was unplugged. Having this enabled will just kind of remind you when you start up Reaper that it's disconnected. It's something you wanted to use, something you told Reaper you wanted to use, and it's not connected right now. So uh, you can um, plug it in and hit retry, and then it should work. A couple more things to show you with this. These devices can be sorted by name by clicking on the column, by the mode, or by the ID. Some MIDI devices that you connect are going to uh, actually use up multiple IDs. Um, there is a limit to the number of IDs. Uh, this list here, input ID, goes from 0 to 61, and the output section it goes from 0 to 63. So there is a limit to the number of devices you can actually have connected to the computer. And Reaper is going to remember every single one you connect. And you can run into an issue where if you've used up all of these assignments by trying out different MIDI controllers or virtual MIDI ports, sometimes each device could take up several different um, IDs. So let's say like my AutoMap MIDI, Propellerhead, U AutoMap Huey, AutoMap Logic Mixer, Propellerhead Mixer. That's five different devices. Uh, for one piece of hardware and its accompanying software. So without being able to reassign these things, uh, it, it can be a pain and could be very confusing because the device is connected, uh, it should be working, but Reaper can't find it because all of the IDs are already used up. So having that window pop up when you start Reaper, that can be annoying or it can be helpful depending on how you look at it. And one last thing I wanted to say is that you can find these Reaper um, MIDI hardware assignments in uh, reaper-midihw.ini. looks like this. So here are all my input devices and everything like that. And so in one is my AutoMap MIDI. Yeah, all these assignments are in here. The old way of managing these input and output devices for MIDI were in this text file.
The JS spectrograph spectrogram meter now has a rate control so we can change how fast this scrolls. Down here, and drag this up. It'll scroll faster and give us that data more quickly. It goes up to 40 and down to 1. So it can scroll quite slowly or quickly, uh, however we like to see this. Up next, we're going to talk about the new arming of actions function. And we can look at this in the action list. So let's just do split. So split item. This would be a common one that you'll use. We're just going to go down to the default one, which is, it's normally assigned to S, item split items at edit or play cursor. What's new here is that we can right click this action. We can arm or disarm actions. So I'm going to click on arm. And now anytime I click in this item, it's going to split the item. Because I have snapped a grid on, it's snapping uh, that cut on the grid line rather than exactly where my mouse was positioned. But we can turn off snap to grid. We'll have to arm that again. But yeah, this is um, now a simple way of arming the actions for something that we don't use. Maybe we don't use this every day, but for certain tasks, maybe we just want to find the action from the action list and then arm it and then do our task and move on. After we're done with this armed action, we just hit the escape key and that will disable the armed action. So previously, that was only available when we had that function added to a toolbar. Now let's just go through that real quick. I'm going to customize this toolbar, add in that action, split items at edit or play cursor. I'm going to add that, put this right at the top, right at the top. All right, so it's first in my toolbar right here. So that new function that I just showed you is the same as if we right clicked on an action in the toolbar. Whenever I left click, it's going to split that item. And we can left click this to turn that off, or we can hit escape, or we can hit some other button, and it will disarm. What else is new is that we can now kind of automate that right click or emulate right clicking on that button to arm it um, in the action list. And how we do that is we make a custom action that combines those two functions. So we're going to um, make a new custom action. And so this will be um, arm split items. So once again, we're going to grab that split item at edit or play cursor. This is a good one to choose if you want the splits to be on the grid uh, or to follow the grid. Otherwise, you want to use the split item at uh, under mouse cursor, and you can choose whether it selects the left or the right. The second action we need is arm um, action, arm next action, and we put that right at the top. We can assign an action to it. So add in, let's say, shift W, that will arm this action, the split items at at our play cursor action um, once we assign that. So shift W, and you can see here that because I still have that button on the toolbar, it's now lit up. And I use the keyboard to trigger that instead of right clicking. And it will stay armed until we hit escape. And then it will um, deselect the items, disable the armed actions. And if we have a bunch of these armed actions with different uh, keyboard shortcuts to enable them, um, it can keep track of which ones are armed and which are not. So yeah, um, some nice, cool things. And you also saw in there that there was an action for disarming an action if you need to use that in a custom action. And one last thing I want to clear up with this is that it's the original action here, not the armed action that went into the toolbar. So you don't need the action that is just, you know, arm this next action and then that action. And it's not going to indicate the, the status of it. it. The function will still work, it just won't indicate the status. And this is something that I got wrong the first time I tried it, so I want to make sure that uh, no one else no one else makes that mistake. Now related to that arming action is a new API function, so we can arm and find out which actions are armed 
uh, through these uh, new functions, uh, arm command, and then brackets, and within the brackets you put in that action ID. And then they've also added take and track effects, copy to take and track effects functions, uh, track and take effects delete, track, take effects, um, and get set or get offline. So more useful stuff for rescripting. And one more thing with Rescript is that flickering from resizing script windows is going to be greatly reduced, if not entirely fixed, uh, which is great. Um, there's a lot of scripts you need to resize the GUI for, and that was often a really ugly mess. And now it looks really nice. Here's a MIDI X Machina script in Reaper 5.93. And as you can see, as I resize this, it's getting really glitchy. And I switch over to the latest version, same script, pretty much uh, flicker free. Now let's look at automation items. There are a lot of things here. I'm just going to read this off. There's only one I can really show you because uh, it's all kind of like little refinements and none of them are really too obvious. It should just be overall more intuitive, more refined workflow. So let's go through these. Copying, pasting, and duplicating time selection include all automation of tracks with items within time selection. Avoid adding redundant points to envelope when moving points to new automation item. Improved automation item selection behavior when copying, moving, pasting, auto-splitting, or duplicating. Fix automation item position glitch when duplicating multiple automation items that partially intersect the time selection. Use media item duplication preference for automation item pooling when duplicating regions from ruler. Trim any existing automation items when pasting duplicating items that have any automation. Avoid hiding default setting envelopes when copying media items from other tracks. Improve auto cleanup of redundant square points. Improve cleanup of unnecessary automatically added envelopes points when moving media items and prevent creation of automation items in tempo envelope on paste. So like I said, this is all kind of feature refinements, nothing really new here, but I will show you my favorite of these changes. I've got an item here, I've got an automation item, I've got a little bit of a envelope here. If I drag this around, you can see that there's a point at the end that was left. If I let go, that's all been uh, cleaned up. So as we move items or automation items, they're not going to leave a trail of these redundant points outside of the automation item. So that's all I wanted to show in this video. Hope it's been helpful. There's a lot more stuff here in the update, uh, but not stuff that I can really show and demonstrate and stuff that's applicable to all users. If you've missed previous updates, there is a big playlist of all the changes since Reaper 5 came out. That's a great way for you to catch up on all the features that you may have missed. There's so many things that have changed since Reaper 5 came out uh, over the past couple of years. So uh, dig into that and enjoy those all those new features. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. Support the Reaper Blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.